Murano is an island, or rather a cluster of islands linked by bridges, lying about one mile north of Venice proper. Murano is regarded as one of the oldest settlements in the Venetian lagoon, even predating Venice proper by a few centuries. The island boasts a 35 meter lighthouse, marking the location of its ancient port. Unlike the other islands in the lagoon, Murano minted its own coins and had its independent government until the 13th century, when it was annexed by the city of Venice. Theories abound on the origin of the island's ancient name, Amurianum. Some historians claim it means the colony of the walled cities, or the village of the lingerers, referring to navigators from nearby coastal towns who eventually settled the island at the very beginning of the Common Era. According to one legend, Murano was known as the Island of Women, as it was home to a large coven of witches in the early Middle Ages. Murano's coat of arms features a rooster, reminiscent of the basilisk or a cockatrice, a legendary exotic rooster usually portrayed as stalked by a weasel or fox and preying on a snake or worm representing the vicissitudes of life. The rooster has always been associated with alchemy, magic, and clairvoyance. In European mystery schools, it symbolized vigilance and perseverance. One of the main Gnostic deities was Abraxas a rooster-headed archon who was said to preside over the solar system and the cycle of the seasons. In Asian cultures, the rooster symbolizes passion and attachment to earthly life. The Church of St. Mary and St. Donatus is one of the oldest in the Venetian lagoon, built on Murano in the 7th century. It houses a glass crucifix, a well-preserved mummy, and four alleged dragon bones. The colorful mosaic floor measures over 500 square meters and is made of porphyry, serpentine, and other precious stones. Another important religious site on the island is that of St. Mary of the Angels, built in the 12th century. The monastery housed nuns from the most prestigious Venetian families, but was mysteriously abandoned by the end of the 19th century. The church was visited by King Henry III of France in the 16th century. Even Casanova frequented it in the 18th century and enjoyed trysting with the local nuns. When he was still a child, Casanova's parents took him to a witch on Murano, who cured him of an unknown disease. In antiquity and the Middle Ages, glassmaking developed hand-in-hand -hand with alchemy. During the 13th century, Murano became a center for glassmaking, catering to Italian alchemists' demand for alembics and tubes, as well as providing the church and aristocracy with colored glass beads, vases, and chandeliers. Murano glassmakers developed the exceptionally clear colorless crystal glass which was extensively used for windows, mirrors, lanterns, and lenses. While benefiting from certain statutory privileges, glassmakers were forbidden to leave the Venetian lagoon 
and divulge the secrets of their trade. However, in the 20th century, the production techniques of Murano glass were finally disclosed to the world at large. One of the best Murano masters, Pino Signoretto, decided to travel overseas and collaborate with the best American glass artists, such as Dale Chihuly and William Morris. His younger brother, Giancarlo Signoretto, carried on his work on Murano Island, also training apprentices, including Agnese Tagon, one of the first female glass blowers in Italy. The most avant-garde glass studio in Venice is aptly called El Cocal, meaning the seagull, that is, the most aggressive bird in the Venetian lagoon. The workshop is run by two skilled young women, Chiara and Mariana, who use traditional tools and techniques to make both clear and multicolor glass items. They specialize in Venus figurines, but their repertoire ranges from sculptures to goblets and decanters, and even musical instruments.